Hello everyone, welcome to Chasing a Murderer. We are on part 81 of Life Beyond the Grave, which is attached to the Lori Vallow case. And I would like to take a moment to ask you wonderful people to consider liking, subscribing, and even sharing the video if you believe in the work that I do. Let's also make sure that we raise awareness for those faces that their loved ones or families have not found answers still years later. So remember, I use big stories to push little faces. So where did we leave off in this series, Life Beyond the Grave? Well, we were moving forward in 2019, but we're going to jump back just a little bit here, just before 2019, where Lori had actually invited several people, people like Melanie Gibb, Chad Daybell, and many others like Zulima, Alex Cox, uh, Selena, Aubrey, to join in the fun. Just recently in the Lori Ballow trial, there was a testimony by Zulima, and I want to go over that with you guys. Zulima can help us understand and, un well, we can untie these little secrets and look a little bit inside, inside of those boxes that have many hidden bones. We might jump back just a little bit more. So remember, Lori Vallow, Melanie Gibb, and several later ladies like Zulima, Serena, they all jump in a, well, a ladies' trip, head to St. George. And at this time, the ladies say that they're not certain that Lori has this darker side. And so, I mean, for us, we can see Lori as... Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, but for them during this time, they're not certain. At least that's what they say. Remember when Julie Rowe mentioned that she's seen a lot of women talking to Chad? Well, Zalima says that during the St. George conference, after he gets through speaking, Lori, Aubrey, and Melanie Gibb or Melanie Boudreau are not the only ones interested in talking with Chad Davo. Zalima says, she took a moment to talk with him. And as she did, Lori Vella walks up, interrupts them, and here's what she had to say. Hold on one second. Before we get started, pay attention to what she says because she says something I found quite shocking that she had made no plans to go where. The day in, um, uh, while I was talking with um, Chad, um, she came and asked me to um, come to her house to the gathering at her house and I um, I wasn't going to go at first um, and, but um. so Zalima says that she wasn't going to go to Lori's house at first but Chad offers her a blessing and this kind of convinces her interestingly you got to remember that Lori and Chad hardly knew each other and here they are making plans already to hang out at Lori's house. And I can't help but go back to that interview with Melanie Boudreau. Lori Vello always has a plan. So was this something they were planning before she got there? Or was this a sudden um, event they threw together? So let's listen in. Chad told me that he really wanted me to go and meet them there because he said he wanted to give me a blessing. So they're using their special gifts to lure, manipulate, to get what they want or to do what they want. So that's very important. So here the prosecutor asked Zulima to explain for her, you know, what is a blessing? And we've heard a bit about blessing, but what's um, to you uh, and uh, in um, your faith, what is a blessing? Um, a priesthood blessing means that um, someone who holds the priesthood um, in our church um, is prepared to receive um, inspiration or certain words or comfort, words of comfort or words of encouragement or whatever it may be that that person is needing at the time. Um, 
and convey it to the person um, through the laying of the hands um, and um, give that person what they need at the time through a blessing. And so at the uh, Mesa Preparing of People conference, Chad Daybell said he would give you a blessing if you went to Lori Vallow's home. Correct. Okay. Did you end up going to Lori Vallow's home? Yes. Okay. Um, when you got to her home. So here we are. We're going to skip a little bit ahead. So we've gone from the very end of October to the very beginning of November to the middle of November. So around November 16th, 2018. We have heard Zach Cox's version of what he saw, what Melanie Gibbs saw, a little bit of what Aubrey saw and Serena saw. But what had Zalima seen? What we learned is she, uh, she, when I say she, Lori Vallow had asked her husband Charles Vallow to go away somewhere and let her have the house to herself for this little gathering that she put together. So we hear that there's times we heard that the kids go with Charles or they go with someone else. Those stories change, but we have to guess that the children are most likely gone. Zach is the one that actually gets to see some of this go down. And later on, the children. Remember, Zach said he was creeped out by the fact when he walked in a house, he has all these people just stop suddenly all look at him at once and stare quietly. Now, all this gathering stuff, it's either be uh, between it or after or before. Zalima is referring to a few things. She doesn't really give us a timeline. After the Mesa Preparing a People conference, um, who was there that you could remember? So the people that I uh, previously mentioned um, Audrey, Serena, um, Chad Daybell, um, and the artist that was there, <clears throat> and excuse me, and, um, and Alex, um, Cox was there as well. Okay. Now, um, who is Alex Cox? Um, it, it's, uh, he was, um, Lori's, um, brother, and then he... Um, later became my husband. Okay. Let's pause there for just a moment. This is where Zalima claims she will really get to know Alex, also known as Al Alex the Comedian. For those of you following this case, you know that Zalima will later marry this guy. Do you guys remember Alex Cox's interest is a lot and Colombian women. He makes trips to Colombia to mess with women there. I think we covered a lot more details on that in the series, if you want to go through that. And um, prior to this um, meeting at uh, Lori's home, had you met Alex? No, this is the day I met him. Okay. Um, so what was going on at the home? Um, everybody was just um, visiting and um, talking with each other. And then um, Lori, um, Chad, and I went outside uh, to the backyard. And uh, we talked there for a little while. And um, um, okay. what did you talk about? Um, I don't remember what we were talking about. I just remember. Don't let Zalima fool you. She has a dynamite recollection of everything that happened. But it seems to be selective. What she says next right here is very interesting. Her, she was uh, playing basketball and asked um, Chad to play basketball with her. Um, and I felt a little awkward. Um, being, Why? I felt like a third wheel um, because of, 
I think Laura, the way that I saw it was that Laurie was being flirtatious with him and um, it made me feel uncomfortable. So I decided to go inside and Chad um, said that he was going to go inside with me as well. So Lori was playing basketball. Didn't seem like Zuluma was interested in that sort of thing. Lori was trying to be more dominant, it sounds like, trying to connect with Chad through what? Basketball. How would she know Chad Daybell loves basketball? She had obviously studied that through his biographies. She either knew that or it was a great coincidence. So Lori is here what seems to be a way to try to manipulate Chad through using basketball. Zulima says she goes in, she was feeling awkward, and Chad said he was going to go in with Zulima at first. Isn't that interesting? And, well, Lori made sure that to control that situation. At least after my research of her, this seems, you know, something she would do. I mean, this is Lori. Very persistent, very leadership type, very pushy, very dominant, very manipulating, very controlling, very narcissistic. But I was interested in that part where he wanted to go in with Lima and not stay outside with Lori. Said that he was going to go inside with me as well. And Lori made a comment. Um... Of the likes, um, why are you scared of me? And then <clears throat> they stay outside for a little longer. Okay. Um, now you had said Chad had offered to give you a blessing. Did he, Chad, give you a blessing at Lori Vallow's house? Yes. After they came back inside, uh, Lori took me to <clears throat> excuse me um, to a separate part of the house uh, room. Uh, separate from where everybody else was at and um, Chad um, said he was going to give me a blessing and he gave me a blessing that night. Okay. Um, and um, do you remember what the blessing entailed? Um, yes, he um, said that I was... Remember, Lori had just met Chad, Chad a few weeks ago. And now she and Chad, well, they are seeming, well, they seem to be on the same page and both ready to manipulate people in a way that they believe that they're superior to others after Chad and Lori, of, of course, guys. Okay, let's go. Um, a very special person that I was a um, very special being and that I... Um, <clears throat> Um, that I was going to do some amazing things in the future and that he was um, is grateful to know me and I was um, full of um, a lot of praise. Okay. And Lori was present? Yes. Okay. Was anyone else present? No. Okay. Um, um, did you have contact with... Uh, with Lori or Chad again um, that fall or before Christmas? Chad Cleary. Um, did you ever see Melanie Gibb during this time? We attended the same ward, so we would see each other every Sunday. Okay. Did you go to her house at all that fall? It's possible because we were um, good friends, so we used to visit each other a lot. Okay. Um, did you attend, was there a meeting of uh, Chad and Lori and you at Melanie Gibbs' home? Yes. Um, Can you tell us about that? Chad had come down to do a podcast with um, Lori and um, Melanie Gibbs. All right, let's take a break here. So remember, a lot of these people, they've written books attached to the LDS belief system. They've had some kind of, uh, a, well, acquaintance with preparing the people or other people that are part of the preparing the people. But Lori Vallow, she just suddenly 
it's just boom there she is no background in speaking she hasn't written a book at the end of 2018 or the beginning actually of december Lori is doing podcasts with Jason Mal, Melanie Gibb, Chad Daybell, David Warwick. And she has just recently, well, said that she was a visionary. That she had been speaking with God, Jesus, the demons, uh, Satan, spirits, and angels. In one of these podcasts, because she does several, we're not going to have time to go into those. We've mentioned it before. She says the children must suffer. Let's continue. They had started a podcast and he came to be um, one of the guests at their podcast. Um, and while you were there, did you talk to um, Chad and Lori? Um, yes. Um, Chad um, invited me to, <clears throat> um, he went, wanted us to go to lunch. Um, he said he had some information to give me, and he really wanted a, wanted me to um, meet them for lunch. Let's talk a little bit about this. So Chad has invited Zalima to lunch with Lori and a couple other people, where he has this diagram of her past lives. And this is something we haven't heard much about until Lori Bellow come to meet Chad Daybell. So one would have to wonder, does she have what it, well, the, was she responsible for pushing that? Okay. And um, did you do that? Yes. Okay. Um, where did you go to lunch? We went to a restaurant called Firebirds in Gilbert, Arizona. Okay. Um, what happened at the restaurant at Gilbert? At Firebirds? So Chad tells her that he has this elaborate um, information for her. She testifies that the people that were with her at this restaurant during this time is Melanie Gibb, Chad Daybell, and Lori Vallow and herself. Salima doesn't go into details of this information that Chad has um, brought to her. And the thing is, there's, very, there's something very strange. They're going to not want to share everything with her while Melanie Gibbs there. To me, this was the perfect opportunity to manipulate her into thinking she was more special. And I believe that they were telling Melanie Gibbs the same thing. Salima says that she can really tell that they don't want to share this information in front of Melanie Gibb. So there you go. Um, Chad and Lori didn't want um, Melanie to hear what he was going to tell me. Um, so he just told me what kind of information he was going to give me. Um, and then he called me to tell me... Um, what my prior lives had been um, and in this conversation he told me that um, there was a way that he rated people whether they were light or dark and so he gave me a rating of um, of uh, the light how light I was and then he told me that I had come um, that I had other lives on this earth and um, he gave me the times and who I was um, on the prior lives that I had lived on this earth. Um, now, during that conversation of, of the light and dark, did he give light and dark to anyone else? Or was this conversation solely about you? During this conversation, it was only about me. Um, and did he go into detail about what he said were your prior lives? Yes. Okay. Um, did he talk about any of your prior lives in terms of how you passed away in that conversation? Um, he said that, um, I believe it was the second time. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
believe it was the second time that I had come to the earth. Um, he said that I was, um, give me a moment. Um, he told me that I had was, um, I had been, um, Lori's daughter. Um, and, um, during that, um, during that probation or during that time that I, or during that life that I had been um, um, killed at a very young age, at age 14, that I had been um, raped and then that my body had been dismembered um, by um, the Lennonites and I was killed at the same time that um, Lori was when she was my mother during that life. Um, and was Melanie Gibb there when you were told this? Chad gives her the information alone over the phone. The fire first, he told me the, what he wanted to tell me, but then on a, during a phone call was when he gave me the details. Okay. And that phone call followed up on the lunch after Firebirds? Oh, correct. Okay. Um, was there anything else discussed at that lunch at Firebirds? It had been a little while since I had spoken to her. Um, I had sent her some text and um, she wasn't answering me again. So I hadn't talked to her for a little while. And then she invited me to meet her for lunch. Okay. Where did you go to lunch? At the same restaurant, Firebirds in Gilbert. Okay. Um, what happened at the lunch at um, Firebirds at, at Firebirds in Gilbert, Arizona? <clears throat> During this lunch, um, Lori um, made a diagram of. Um, how different creations are created and how many worlds there are and how many probations one person can have and how um, people are either light or dark. And she made a, a diagram and um, showed how people progress um, towards lightness or towards darkness. Okay. Um, and did she say how she knew this stuff? How did she know about light and dark? Or did she tell you at that lunch? Um, I don't believe that she said um how she was finding this information. Um, I guess just assumed that it was coming from Chad since he was the one that had given me my rating or I don't even know what to call it. I guess like rating of light or dark. Is it kind of like a scale? Yeah, like a scale, yes. Okay. Um, and he had previously given you a rating on the light scale or on the dark scale? Correct. Okay. And then you were hearing similar things at this lunch with Lori? Correct. Who was at the lunch? It was Lori, uh, Val, Melanie, Gibb, and I. Okay. Um, and it, forgive me, where, did she put you on the light scale or the dark scale? I, I don't remember. Um, and the light scale. Okay. Um, and were there sort of levels of light or levels in dark on each scale? Yes. Okay. What was your level, if you remember? Were you high or low? 4.2 or something like that. Okay. I think that was, was that a high number or a low number? It was um, fairly high. Okay. Um, did she tell you what her, where she was on the scale? Yes, I believe that she said she was a 4.3. Okay. Um, and so during this lunch at Firebirds, did she talk about anything, any other ideas involving um, light or dark or spirits? 
during this lunch, um, she said that um, Charles Vala, her husband, had been possessed by a um, dark spirit or demon. <clears throat> and did um, was she able to identify for you the name of that demon or dark spirit? Yes, I believe that she named him Garrett. Okay. And um, did she talk anything about, you know, helping Charles at all with this situation? Um, she, um, she expressed how different he was. Um, he was acting different. He was... Um, more organized than he was before, um, that he was a completely different person, um, that he even looked like he was shorter than he was before, that this evil spirit had been following him for a couple of years so that he could learn everything about him and then now had possessed him. Okay. Um, so this spirit that has taken over his body uh, Ned Snyder, well, this guy had been following him for a while, or is she referring to Garrett? Following him for two years in order to learn about Charles and his life so that he could pass off as Charles. Um, now, was this uh, near the time that you would, you know, before Christmas or after Christmas? After Christmas. Okay. So we get a um, new timeline here. She's going to tell us that it's after Christmas of 2018, and she's going to say it's around February of 2019. That's when she finds out about it, but that doesn't seem to line up, does it? What are we referring to? While Charles' original spirit is pushed out and a demon has taken over Charles' body, and this demon had actually studied Charles, Charles for a couple of years first. Was it winter out or spring out? I believe this was around February. Of 2019 now? 2019. Okay. And why do you think it was February of 2019? If I remember correctly, that's what... Um, there was a um, receipt from that lunch and uh, I kept the receipt because that's where Lori had made the diagram and I had taken it home with me. And if I'm not mistaken, that's what the date on that receipt says. Okay. So, um, and we'll get the copies of the receipt in a little bit. We'll, let's get through testimony and then we'll do evidence, okay? Okay. All right, because you took that receipt and turned it over to law enforcement? Correct. Okay. So, um, February of 2019... Um, it's at that lunch, and she's talking to you about light and dark. Is that right? Yes. She's talking to you about the demon in Charles. Yes. Prior to this time, had she talked to you about any concerns or problems she she had had with Charles or in her marriage? When we were at the Preparing of People in St. George, she had expressed that she had, an, <clears throat> that her and Charles were having some uh, financial difficulties. Um, and at that time, um, while we were there, um, she said that she had been the beneficiary of Joseph Ryan's um, life insurance that was a prior one of her prior husbands and um that she had received um i believe it was sixty thousand dollars from that life insurance okay um and uh mr ryan was he the father of tylee correct okay your honor i think i think we're getting into impermissible testimony regarding form 4b i think we talked about that I Remember Joseph Ryan? Well, Joseph Ryan, it doesn't seem that he would have left Lori Bellow the beneficiary. And the, the way that he died is already suspicious. 
but we're not able to get much information on that because before people really caught on, it was too late. He died April of 2018. For me, Lori did get her hands on this money, whether it was legally or unlegally. She figured out real quick that there's quick money in life insurance policies. That's what I believe. But you can come to your own conclusion. Throughout this story, there will be a lot, a lot of mention of life insurance policies. For Melanie Boudreaux's family, for Lori Vallow's children, her husband, Chad Daybell's wife, Tammy Daybell. So remember that, guys. And Lori, I think a lot of her comments that she will say in the future here is going to be based off of Joseph Ryan. It seemed like nobody cared about Joseph Ryan when this happened to him. And so that would seem like easy money if you were in that mind um, set, I guess. And we just heard on a video in October of 2018 how Lori Vallow wanted to murder Joseph Ryan. So keep that stuff in the back of your mind. Zalima gets emotional on this part and she takes a few seconds. And what she doesn't realize is how Lori February. thought of her. All of these she about it now? in Lori's game. To Lori, they were idiots. Uh, Lisa. And this includes okay. Chad Bebo. So then we're at the lunch um, where she's talked about light and dark. Um, and she talks about Charles's situation with with Garrett. Um, what did um, did she say anything else about um, Charles and and the dark spirit? She didn't know at first that he was um, that he had been changed or he was a demon that he had been possessed by a demon and that she had slept with him twice, not knowing that he was possessed. Okay. Um, did she um, say that there was any way to help him or deal with the demon? Not at this time. Okay. Did she ever talk to you about a way to help or deal with the demon? Yes. What did she say? I'm sorry. When did she say that? Let's do it that way. When did she say that? We will go into that one a little bit more later. So I felt like this was very important to share so that you could see you know, or hear Zalima share her experience with Lori as they start going and learning all these new concepts and ideas. But don't let that testimony fool you in thinking that during this time that this all this is happening, that her mindset is where it is at this point, because it's not. Her mindset is she's supportive, 100%. She has already sent a message to Lori saying, I'm your protector. You know, this is my job and I'm going to do it. I will end right here, but please share your thoughts below. Do you believe Zalima knew way more than she's admitting to? And why do you think she used um so often in her testimony? Thank you so much, guys, for subscribing. Thank you for liking and commenting. And thank you to those that we have new members. Hey, guys, welcome. Thank you so much to our Patreons, especially those who have been given $3 or whatever you could give the show support. Love you guys, and I'll see you guys on part 82.